So welcome uh, to our session today. Uh, we are here to talk about data-driven e-commerce strategies and um, kind of give you some insights on how to perfect your logistics optimization formula. Uh, you've been to quite a few of these, I'm sure, so far, and we've all started off the same way. And so I'll ask you the same. Uh, please rate the session. Uh, please hashtag your, uh, your best tip. I think right after this, we'll be going to another session where the top 20 tips will be reviewed from Parcel Forum. So I know Kobe has a goal to have one of his uh, knowledge drops there uh, mentioned in, in the next session. So, um, so that's our, our housekeeping. We'll, we'll make some introductions. I'm Oscar Gladman. Uh, I'm the uh, Director of Par Parcel Carrier Development with Geotis. Uh, help manage our, uh, our carrier relationships uh, with, with parcel carriers, negotiated contracts, and uh, build solutions for our customers. You go ahead next, Jeff. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Jeff McDermott. I'm Executive Vice President of our Transportation Business Unit at Geodis. And for those of you that don't know Geodis, we're a global third-party logistics company. We really provide services and uh, international freight forwarding, uh, value-added warehousing, and uh, domestic transportation management. And here in the U.S., we, uh, we operate a, about 50 million square feet of warehouse space and about 40% of our volume or business is e-commerce direct-to-consumer orders. So needless to say, we've got a little bit of data in our, in our systems. Hi, everyone. Uh, Becca Sandberg. I am with the Hey Dude brand. I manage our 3PL logistics and operation. A uh, little history for those who don't know the brand. We were acquired by Crocs uh, back in February of last year. We're a very fast-growing brand, and uh, we utilize 3PLs, not Geodis, but we do utilize 3PLs uh, for our e-commerce fulfillment, and data is very important to us as well. Hey, everybody. I'm Kobe Nils. <clears throat> Excuse me. Kobe Nilsson, CEO, co-founder of Inveil. At Inveil, uh, we're a technology company that uh, really tries to help our customers take all that data in leverage it to more effectively optimize and, and uh, drive, drive value into their supply chain and successful outcomes for their customers. Very good. Thank you, everybody. Um, so objectives for today's session, um, you know, shippers, 3PLs, uh, you know, uh, we, we all face challenges uh, in today's landscape. So leveraging data for operational improvements, it can be confusing. Um, you need the right tools, the right integrations, the right partners. I think we'll touch on that a little bit in the session. We, we hope that, um, you know, we'll, we'll learn a little bit today uh, about how to improve e-commerce logistics operations through data management, um, technology, and there's integration partners that I talked about and bus business systems that uh, will, will drive competitive advantage. Um, so uh, we'll talk a little bit about, about real world insights, um, putting data at the core, um, methodologies um, for, for the integration part, and then um, building business case for, um, for making change. So we've got a, quite a few questions here, uh, which we'll try to get through each one, but uh, I think the the first question that uh, I want to address, what are the biggest challenges that, that people were facing today uh, when it comes to, to data and leveraging that? Yeah, it's an interesting question because um, here we are, I don't know, we've been in supply chain specifically from a technology standpoint for 13 years, and we're still talking about the same problems. It's integration, it's normalization, data resides in all these silos. We have various systems. Uh, all kinds of partners, and I'm talking technology partners, I'm talking carrier partners, 3PLs in the mix. So it's really hard for organizations to get their arms around all of that, centralize it, and then it's not just the centralization, it's being able to uh, normalize it and make it uh, consumable so it can be leveraged for uh, business decisions and and uh, the, ultimately the results we want, which is successful, happy customers. Very good. Um, 
Okay, so then I, I guess we'll we'll shift to. I don't have this directing towards towards anyone specifically, but so maybe uh, whoever this this makes the most sense to. But um, you know, how do organizations overcome those those roadblocks uh, roadblocks and um, trust and leverage their data? Well, I'll I'll add here. Um, you know, being in a three PL seat, we work with many many different companies, and I'd say that. Each company is in a different situation when it comes to how they manage data, how they work with their data, how they use their data, uh, on and on and on. And what I would also add is that it doesn't, even the big companies struggle with this. We work with a lot of Fortune 500 companies, Fortune 100 companies, and they're, they struggle with the same challenges. And I, I think um, the one th thing that I see that breaks down is who really owns the data in an organization, right? IT departments can help get things set up. They can help uh, work with the integrations. They can help get data consolidated. But who owns it, right? And I think we all know that we're kidding ourselves if, if we just think data is going to magically appear somewhere and we're going to be able to run reports using Power BI or something and it's reliable and the data is high quality and we can trust it. But that's not reality, right? Um, in the world of supply chain, one little change upstream can have a big impact on the data downstream and what you see and what you report. So the companies that um, that we work with that we feel like have the best handle on this are companies that have some kind of ownership in the data. And when I and it's not an IT person, it's a it's a business person that can uh, live and breathe and work with the data. And then if you're using external partners, you have to manage them as well, right? Are they giving you quality data? How are you validating that, et cetera? So. I think a lot of companies under-resource that, and then they get frustrated with the quality of their data. All right. Kobe, how do people fix that problem? <laughs> well, it's a, interesting. Uh, I've heard it called a data czar, right? Like somebody who owns that within the organization. Uh, and part of it's just like, we have to keep evangelizing that that need uh, as as um, from the vendor side into these organizations, but not just it, from a sales standpoint, we have to help them build the business case for it intra organization. Um, uh, supply chain, uh, logistics side of a business is historically under resourced, right? And so, um, any you talk about Power BI or these other tools, well, uh, marketing has those assets readily available to them and generally that's not uh, the supply chain folks or your your uh, vps of distribution they're the last ones to get access to those tools so so i think it's it's a messaging thing it's a how do we help build that business case within the organization so because uh, because the folks that we work with they're the champions for it they're they're in the trenches they're dealing with that pain so we have to help them sell upward into the organization that, that this is a real need. Yeah, and I would just chime in on that really quick. So for us, obviously, we have Crocs who um, has an established process. They have their own DC. They fulfill all of their own orders and then brought in this new Hey Dude brand that we inherited all of the contracts. We're utilizing 3PLs for the first time. We're, you know, what is a 3PL? You know, Crocs really didn't have to uh, utilize those in the past. And so, um, you know, for Kobe's point, I, for our brand, I was that champion that was like, we need help. We, we need to stabilize our data and standardize it. And, um, you know, we have resources on the Crocs side that are established that are, you know, BI and things of that nature. And we can really dive into with also some external partners of what is our cost? What is, you know, what are we trying to accomplish with this data? But with the 3PL partners, it was challenging because we have two partners and their data comes to us very differently. And how do we um, come to the same end business, you know, decisions um, with all of this different information? And so it, it was, you know, challenging, but now very rewarding to, to have a partner that can help us with that. Well, I think that's a good segue into the next question. 
Um, you, you recognize you have a, a problem and you've identified all these data needs and now we need to make some investments in fixing those problems. So how do you get from the investment point to value as quickly as possible uh, once that's uncovered, and both for, for you, Becca, and, and Jeff? Yeah, well, I'll start out by saying that, uh, you know, I think that the supply chain data is vital to all parts of the organization. And, and I always say that if you're going to fix a problem, you got to begin with the end in mind, right? So what is your CFO looking for? What are your sales and marketing departments looking for? Your operations department, what are they looking for in terms of metrics? And do you have their buy-in in, in um, what they're looking for so you can try to solve that problem? I think a lot of times I see companies say, oh, just give me all the data and I'll run queries on it and I'll be able to just you know, run ad hoc reports as needed. And that's good. Sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes you're trying to get a quick answer on a question you have. But when it comes to quality metrics that show uh, good trends, uh, is the business performing well? Is it not performing well? You have to have that buy-in from the organization so that when you're trying to solve this data challenge, you're going about it in the right, the right approach. Yeah, definitely. Um, same thing for us having that, you know, we have a lot of kind of silos within our organization of our finance, our e-com, our marketing that are wanting to, you know, accomplish different business goals and coming to us, hey, what are we doing for shipping and fulfillment and pulling different things here and there and having that all come into one cohesive system um, is something we're really excited for um, to be able to access that and, um, you know, collaborate better as an organization. All right. So I, th I think we're shifting gears a little bit here now uh, as I read down through the questions and they're all on the same slide. So you all had an opportunity to preview, but um, so let's talk about peak We're we're coming up here pretty soon. We're uh, man, it feels like it's June yesterday, but um, things are about to get uh, interesting. Um, so, uh, you know, how, how are you guys all planning for, for peak? What's forecasting look like? How does data management and, and what we're talking about here in the session really, um, you know, cross over and in, into anything that involves peak? Well, I'll start out by saying that's the million dollar question, right? When we talk to our customers about a forecast, they're, they're struggling to nail that down. Um, you know, you know, as, as, is volume going to pick back up in Q4? You know, are we going to have a peak that kind of resembles a no, whatever a normal peak is? But I think we all know that it, there's a lot of uncertainty on what the consumer buying patterns are going to look like. So what we're trying to do, and this is where the data comes into it, is we're trying to take whatever information that we have on behalf of our customers to help them. So for example, um, we're already looking at, well, what's their inventory position look like? If they don't have the inventory, um, building up the way it should, that pretty much tells us it's going to be hard to ship those orders if you don't, if you don't have that inventory. We're also looking at um, trend analysis. You know, what were, their, what were their numbers last year versus how are they been trending uh, the first part of this year, right? So if they're expecting a 30% jump in volume for peak and they've only been trending 5 or 10% above last year, well, how do you feel comfortable with a 30% jump there? So we're trying to use everything we can to, uh, to help our customers prepare while they're gathering sales data and everything internally from, from within their organization. And you know, a couple of things that we're seeing already for peak, uh, first of all, I would say um, the challenge of warehouse labor is not what we've seen the last two to three years, right? Uh, now, don't get me wrong, there's some markets where it's still difficult finding workers and everything else, but it's not like what we've experienced. So the key for this peak season will be ramp the labor up when you need it and then ramp it down as quickly as you can because you, you don't want that extra cost on your P&L if your order volume isn't there to support it. Um, the second thing, and we probably heard a lot to, uh, j this week at this conference, is uh, parcel capacity. And again, after living that, that dread for the last two to three years, that doesn't appear to be as big a challenge this year. So um, there's always the windows uh, during right before uh, right before Christmas where 
uh, air capacity could tighten up a little bit. But for overall, uh, we feel like that won't be an issue. So those are things that we're working with our customers to say, let's, let's take your forecasted order volume, model it into your routing strategy with your carriers to help try to get to an estimated cost. And how does that look within your budget parameters? So some examples that we're trying to do in a world of uncertainty to try to help our customers out. Yeah, we've uh, we've actually we've already sent our 3PL partners our peak forecast. Obviously, it's uh, you know more of a baseline. There's going to be you know a percentage of discrepancy with that, but um, you know we've really pushed our e-com and marketing team to be proactive with what promos they're doing and when they're doing them um, to ensure that. From a labor perspective, um, just from a SLA perspective, that we're not, um, you know, potentially risking um, our holiday cutoffs and things of that nature. So we've already sent off an initial forecast, but we'll be working closely with our partners to continue to fine tune that over the next uh, probably month and, you know, try and be as confident as anyone can be. All right. Well, anytime we talk about data, uh, specifically when we're talking about parcel data. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of it in logistics data. Um, there's a lot of nuance. Uh, we've had a conversation with probably every one of you on this panel about uh, exceptions and nuances as we go through, um, you know, looking at implementing some type of optimization strategy. But um, so, so maybe just tell us a little bit about some of the nuances around internal functions, leveraging logistics data, and the impact they end up having across the entire organization. Sure. Um, yeah, our finance team is a big one that is constantly looking into the data. Um, primarily, we pull from the invoices our three PLs provide us. So we they do send us, you know, full PLD information. And so we can very easily, um, you know, see what our averages are looking like, any trends. Um, of course, right now we can't get that into a nice standardized model, but um, hopefully soon we'll be able to really present an easy picture to finance and other groups of the business. Um, you know, we do a lot of work. We're now with Crocs, you know, we're quite the large company. And so every quarter we're looking ahead and, you know, how are we accruing? What are we planning for? You know, what are we our expected costs in different areas of of shipping, of returns, of fulfillment, everything, um, you know, we have to uh, present a number ahead of time and we do our best to land as close as possible to that number when it comes to actuals. But um, having more standardized data, I think will really help us moving forward, reach those goals. Yeah. And what I would add from an e-commerce perspective, we're really big on trying to, from, from a customer satisfaction, trying to look at that that order or, you know, click to deliver, right? So um, by the time that order drops um, to us in the warehouse, you know, how many hours, days, whatever it may be to get that order fulfilled. And then what does the, uh, what does the transit time look like? And we're constantly uh, sharing that information with our customer to look at tweaking the routing strategy. So in the heyday of the pandemic, it was more about service the customer right? Um, you know, I'm under the gun to get these orders out. I want to keep my customers happy. My sales order, my sales volumes were great. So I could cover up uh, some extra cost in my business because I had the volumes to offset it. Now that things have normalized a little bit, we see a lot of companies that are, they're more dialed in on cost, right? So by having the data, we're able to look at those different what if scenarios, right? What if, what if we, uh, change the carrier routing strategy? Uh, what if we switch to different service level? You know, and then again, looking at it from an end-to-end -end perspective, what's going to be the impact on the on the end consumer? I might be able to save a half million dollars, but am I going to be happy with the transit times that my, my consumers are going to experience? So again, this is where we work with the finance departments within our customers, their sales and marketing teams within our customers, and it's a collaborative effort as we kind of think through through the strategy there. Beck, any comments on that? I, I I work with a lot of brands, you know, directly, and it and it feels like um, 
you know, as, as I talk to their transportation group, you know, most of the time they're getting a lot of pressures from various groups within the organization. You know, finance is coming to them with cost pressures, marketing's coming to them and saying, we need to get to our customers faster, fast and free shipping. I think uh, uh, we talk about all the time. Uh, and so, uh, I mean, how does that impact you? I mean, are, are there data points and uh, do you use uh, any models to, um, to navigate through all the people you, you need to speak with in the organization and make everybody happy? Yeah. Um, well, kind of what I've, I've uh, alluded to is, you know, we are in need of having a way to present clear data and models and Inveo, um, you know, hopefully is going to be able to help us very soon with presenting that information. Um, but yeah, I have conversations all the time, a lot with finance, a lot with our e-com and marketing teams of, hey, you know, what are our last data ships going to be for Christmas? I got an email about that last week and I'm like, I think we're quite there yet. But, um, you know, there's there's a lot of pressures, especially as a growing brand. Um, we're trying to continue on that growth trend as as best as we can. And with that comes high expectations from our customers that we want to be able to meet, but we need to put in a conscious effort of, you know, making those business decisions as a large organization and not just these different departments. And so to answer your question, we're not quite there yet, but I hope to be able to, um, you know, have a stronger presentation to the group here, here very soon. Good, good. Well, I mean, it sounds like you're building a business case. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like I said, I was I was so, the champion to to try and get this through. So why why don't you tell us about that business case? So what? How, how did you build it? What's that look like? And uh, who are you trying to convince? Yeah, yeah. So for us, uh, like I mentioned earlier, for Crocs, we we have kind of an internal um, group that had been built up over the years, as well as some other external partners that we had in place that. Um, you know, since Crocs owns all of their transportation and fulfillment, it was very um, kind of more plug and play um, for for use cases. But for us, it was interesting when we, in, you know, bought Hey Dude. Um, I was new to the 3PL area of the space and had previously been in the parcel industry and with the Crocs group of, OK, let's look at the data and boil down for us. We care about our cost per pair. What does it cost to get these shoes to our customers? And um, it was really hard to get to that number with our 3PL partners, because again, you know, we have two partners so that data is not standardized and how we ingest that data um, is not very clean. And so we went out to a few different, um, you know, experts in the industry. And a lot of folks were like, yeah, it's a need, but sorry, we can't help you. We don't have this solution built yet. And, um, you know, thankfully we referred to Inveo. And so I immediately started building a case to our transportation and finance groups um, all the way up to our, you know, SVP level of, hey, this is a need for us. And, um, you know, we can't be the only ones that need it. I, I mean, that's kind of a trend this week of all these retailers that are utilizing 3PLs, 4PLs, even 5PLs that um, are helping fulfill their orders. And, um, you know, we need to be able to, at the end of the month, end of quarter, end of year, you know, speak to what we're spending and what that really means, what all goes into it. And um, so far, it's it's pretty much been me auditing our large invoices and, you know, catching any big discrepancies when we can. But I think there's, um, you know, from an audit perspective, there's a lot of opportunity. But then again, from that data perspective, we're very excited to be able to, um, again, just have that in a single solution. Thank you. Um, I am curious, Jeff, from your perspective. I mean, I, I remember going through this process with you, um, you know, it, it like from the executive level as we're making decisions about making driving change uh, related to data. Um, you know, do you, do you have any thoughts or recall any like key decision points that, that were part of that process for you as we made that choice? Yeah, well, the first thing I would say, if there's one good thing that that came out of the pandemic was that 
supply chain and the importance of the supply chain has made it into the boardroom of companies, right? People have finally woken up on how critical it is. And, um, you know, the, to the, to the success of the business, to managing costs, to keeping customers happy, et cetera. It was out there before, but I think we all know supply chain was always kind of the little bit of the tail of the dog, right? It didn't get the attention and maybe didn't get the investment that it, that it needed within companies. So I think that's a good thing, right? So now getting back to data and running the analysis and things and building the business case, it gets back to how do you, how do you turn that into an ROI and, and eliminate uh, waste throughout the organization? So I'll just give you, give you an example. You think about returns. Every retailer struggles with returns. The, the cost of dealing with returns is crazy. But when you think about in the organization, a lot of companies would be asked, well, who owns returns or who, who cares about returns? Nobody really does. Like, it's kind of like, well, sales says they need to have a friendly returns policy to keep our customers happy and keep driving sales. But if you ask the CFO about how much returns are costing, he's probably not happy about it, right? So how do you take that data, um, analysis, do the analysis, and well, why do I have so many returns? Is this, are people ab abusing our policies? You know, uh, is there a different way to solve returns? I mean, um, some of that you can quantify, some of that will be uh, soft cost in there, but it's examples like that that I think companies have to continue to keep looking at to build the business case and, and justify the, the ROI there. And the other thing is the ability to react quicker. You know, um, if, you're, if you're flying blind and you don't have good data, and you can't make decisions on your business, that's, that's gonna cost you, right? You're either gonna be slow to react or, or you're, gonna, you're gonna have a small problem turn into a big problem. But, um, but again, helps with the business case and why it's critical for the organization to have quality data to be able to do, to do that analysis. So everybody wants to focus on the IT cost, which let's, let's be honest, it's, it's, a, it's a hurdle to get over, but um, you're, you're missing out an opportunity benefit by constantly focusing on that IT cost. Thank you. Okay. So uh, our formal questions are complete and we still have some time, um, but let's talk about just some, some takeaways so far and then maybe just get some, some questions from, from the audience. Um, uh, but I think we made clear that, uh, that data is important uh, it's, it's a key driver to, uh, to success, control your shipping costs, uh, know what's happening within your, your operation, making your customers happy. Um, you know, having a methodology, uh, for the integration, I don't know that we got real deep into that. So maybe as a, as a follow-up question, um, and again, I'm just kind of thinking through when we went through this, um, you know, about a year ago where we, we really, we dug into this deep, um, you, you know, understanding what data points that are, are important um, and, and what approach to take uh, to, to, to drive any type of change. And uh, Kobe, you haven't said a whole lot today, so I'm going to direct this towards you. you. You go through a lot of integrations, I'm sure, and uh, maybe you can get it kind of just speak to us like best practices on, on that side of the, the house. Yeah, it's better that, that you heard from them. That's what everyone came to hear from anyway. But uh, yeah, so I mean, we, we work with a lot of organizations. Data has been and remains the most difficult challenge to solve in any organization. Data is hard. And, um, you know, when, when we're working with organizations, uh, often the questions we're asked are, uh, are you integrated with X? Are you integrated with Y system? And uh, really the right question to ask is, do you have a methodology for integration? Because, yeah, you, you, you can get an answer from a sales guy who's going to say, yeah, I'm totally tied into Oracle, right? Um, but do you have a way of connecting to data? Because these systems vary in levels of sophistication. Uh, the carriers, the partners that you use have varying levels of sophistication as well. So it may be a flat file. It may be, uh, you know, API for the for the more advanced technologies, but API is not always the most elegant way to get vast amounts of data. So, so it's really thinking about the problem that you're gonna solve, 
ensuring you're partnering uh, internally and externally with organizations that understand the complexities of data and the various ways that you need to be able to consume it. Anyone else with thoughts on that? You know, the, just the, the process method uh, for integration. Yeah, I, I agree with Kobe. I think too often everybody focus on the quick, the quick and easy. Oh, we can do that quickly and okay. But again, it gets back to what I said before. Um, are the processes clear on how that data is going to come about, right? And what happens upstream if somebody changes something and then what's, what's the impact of that? Getting, getting the plumbing set up, how you're going to get the data, that's the easy part. But, um, but really the, the quality, the timing, um, and the, the management of that data, I think is where it tends to break down. Okay. Um, and then of course, you know, w one of the other takeaways we had here, um, is, uh, you know, time to value. Uh, I think it's a uh, part of the process in every, uh, purchasing, you know, decision that we make, you know, what's the ROI and how quickly are we going to get um, get, get a return uh, on the investment that we're making. And so, um, hopefully some of the, the comments, uh, that we talked about there were, um, were helpful to you. So, um, questions, uh, what questions do you have for the, the panel? It looks like we've got about 10 minutes here. So, uh, how do you structure your relationship? So if you think of like your clients is giving you orders, and then you're turning those orders into shipments is you kind of your pre black box. Are you getting a lot of requests for access to your data and your role as a pre as opposed to what the company's providing you, which they should already know? Yeah. Yeah, I can, I can take that. So we're going to try and standardize as much as we can internally as a 3PL. And, and what I mean by that is um, between our WMS and our TMS and even, even some of our freight forwarding systems, we're gonna try to standardize the integrations and the data and the business processes that drives that data as much as we can. So when a, when a new customer approaches us and says, hey, I would like Geotis to, to be my provider, we will try to, um, um, you know, have that single integration point with them. So when you send me an order, you, you send it to me in one system and it fl we'll, we'll deal with the flow through the, through the other operating system. So it's kind of that one version of the tr truth that we get from the customer. Um, and it varies, it varies by every customer, but I think if you can work from as much of a standardized process as you can, and we can, we can deal with customizations and custom fields and all those things that everybody wants, but the general process flows, uh, the more you can keep that consistent, the more it helps. So I don't know if that answered your question. Or... Yeah, I guess we just seen some resistance on the 3PLs in terms of opening up their system yeah. to outside queries about what they're dropping the order, how many orders are you yeah. getting for out. You know, I mean, we'll give you reports, but the ability to set up a system where your client can actually access your system yeah. as if it's their own. Well, I'll tell you, we were we were probably pushing more back more on that five years ago than we are now. We've realized that everybody's living in a real time world, so we've invested a lot of money in a in our customer visibility platform to where they can log in, and there are uh, standard reports there, dashboards that, that are available. But we've also given them the ability to customize and write their own reports. Right. So if I want to see some WMS data, TMS data inventory, whatever it is, um, they have that ability. Um, obviously you got to manage the security aspect and the performance aspect. So, you know, somebody can't pull down a huge data file and it creates challenges there. But I think we've realized, I think a lot of other companies have realized that just standard canned reports being emailed, those, those days are not, not there anymore. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, well, good afternoon. Um, I know a lot of companies now are looking to start publishing if they haven't already ESG reports, things like that. Are you getting different requests for data that you haven't previously tracked? Or is that something that 
you feel like is maybe a trend in the industry that people should be thinking about differently? No, you're definitely right. People, um, people not only want to know the cost, but what is the carbon footprint of their business? So, um, we do a lot of, um, we do a lot of network studies, right? We, we have customers that come to us and say, tell me where my DCs should be. Tell me how many do I need? You know, do I need to add a DC? Do I need to reduce a DC? And we've already just built it in to our, um, our tool that we calculate the carbon footprint, right? Matter of fact, I was meeting with a customer this morning and we showed him that here's your cost. Here's what your carbon footprint would be with all these different scenarios. Um, that will just continue to amp up more and more. Um, and obviously, um, there's different scope in there, right? I don't know how you got scope one, scope two, scope three. And obviously a big part of that is the scope three, which is the, um, um, third party transportation providers are a big, a big part of that. So, um, but you're absolutely right. I mean, especially, um, you know, obviously many public companies are reporting that on their 10 Ks and such. So it's a very big deal to them, but many, many other companies are, are managing that as well. It'd be a challenge from a transportation perspective, especially parcel. I think we're all kind of facing that right now as well in terms of, um, knowing exactly how a package travels so that at the package level from a data standpoint, you do have accurate, um, information around, um, you know, emissions reporting. So I think those requests are, are increasing. I've just from a carrier relationship, you know, standpoint, I've seen a lot of movement in the last, you know, year or two with the, at least the national carriers, uh, they seem like they're getting more friendly about, um, sharing that information and more data to, to process through, uh, through partners systems and, 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 uh, and work with. Great. Well, I would add, um, uh, of course, Geodis being a global company, we, we actually, uh, operate a, a large network of trucks in France and there are, there are neighborhoods in, in Paris that you can only deliver with an electric vehicle you can't deal, deliver with a diesel, diesel vehicle anymore. So it's becoming real. <laughs> We all know what's going on with the West Coast ports here in, in California. So it's it's going to become, people's eyes are going to start waking up here soon. We have time for maybe one, one last question, if anyone has one. Yeah. All right. Well, very good. Well, Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much. Thanks, all.